people like Leah and Corey, and they just completely changed their lives. Totally. Yeah, and they all have handled it with, like, a lot of, like, aplomb. Like, they, um, it's, it's a huge thing. And, and it, I, again, it's so annoying to complain about this, and I don't experience it, but, like, it, it, it actually is a change in your life. And, like, Jane has, is just, like, recognized everywhere, and it's, it's like, it, it really does, like, change your life. And so, like, I don't, A, you don't have any experience that it's great. It's kind of, like, be able to sort of live normally and stay grounded at least to be able to escape a little bit from like the crazy yeah. um, I mean they, they like attacked in the malls like you know oh I, they can't even yeah I, they, they would just be out of question <laughs> like it's just crazy and, and it's all it's, oh, wonderful and of course like what we were all like mm-hmm. attention starved like whores at like some level like, <laughs> in different degrees for different reasons but like it, like it is what you it's almost be careful what you wish for. Totally. It's just that nobody wants that. Nobody wants to get it. People want to be respected and be, like, right. appreciated. They don't want to get, like, um, bombarded. With that said, like, they have dealt with it really, like, maturely, I think, and, like, um, but in a way, I think it actually probably feels realer for them because they have to, like, deal with that. Whereas for me, it's still very much, like, it just seems like this weird, like, incredible gift that was just, like, bestowed on me for no reason. And it's, it's very, like, um, there is sort of an aspect of, like, survivor's guilt in that, like, I was, if, I, you know, and I, I, I was explaining it earlier that it was kind of like, um, it, for me, it's not that I wasn't working really hard for, like, because I was an actor for, like, 10, 12 years, like, that was my job, like, that's what I did, and it was, it's not an easy life, particularly in theater, which is what I did, um, uh, and it was a little bit, and then for this just to kind of, like, randomly happen, it's just like you, like, I've spent like 10 years like panning for gold and like something like taps you on your shoulder and like, hey, you won the lottery. And you're like, yeah. oh, I didn't even know I was entered. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little bit of that that you kind of are like, you're, um, that there is a, there is always a fight. It's, this sounds retarded, but like, just that, that like, it's, it, that, uh, I don't know, that like, whoever deserves this, and this is such a random thing that, uh, particularly now, particularly in the last like six months, where it kind of, when we came back, I think in the, in the back nine of the, the first season that, like, it just seemed to, like, I think following American Idol, and just kind of, it, it just seemed to, like, I don't know whether it's magazine covers cause it, or that, that kind of, like, confluence of, like, media attention is a reflection of where you kind of are in, like, the zeitgeist or the other way around, but, like, it just sort of, like, hit the stratosphere. Like, it, was just, like, it was just everywhere, and, like, in a wonderful, wonderful way, but, like, um, we just never... Expect, I mean, who could you ever expect it? And, and then the important thing is just like for us, for me to realize at least, is that like if that specific thing will like never happen again, like that's a once in like a several lifetime thing, just like weird confluence of events. And just these, again, there's just a, there, um, the show's just as yet, and hopefully it'll continue, it's just had this sort of like charmed existence that it just kind of has like randomly like stepped up to the plate all the time. And it, and it now feels like it's. Again, stupid to say, but like it just is a little bit bigger than like any of us. Right. Like, it's not like we're like all holding a rope on like a zeppelin and we're trying to like. Um, like what talk a little bit about the casting process. I mean, how involved were you with in that and the people that made it with their first choices? Did they all audition? Yeah, yeah. Um, we Jane, I think, was the only one um, who I think we just offered it to. Ryan was insistent about getting. Uh, he wanted a lot of people from Broadway. He wanted like real people who can like sing. Um, uh, I think he, he wanted new people, like, he wasn't really into, like, g- getting big stars or whatever. He wanted it to be, if you're going to do a story about underdogs, like, let it be about sort of underdogs. And, um, and there was not, we got, it was weird. I, it was all very new for me, and, like, the first time to be on, like, that side of the table, which is, like, a total yeah. head fucking weird. And, like, um, <laughs> but that, like, it was just, like, yeah, we just sort of got everybody that we wanted like it was all the first choices. <laughs> it was really it yeah. wasn't anybody it wasn't a particular character you had to see 30 40 50 people or? no no and, and you no well yes but like once we found them like it was the only person that it was like uh we had a character called we had this south indian character south asian kid um called rajesh it was like it was in a really really early draft of like the pilot and it was actually um uh we just kind of ri- we, we just kind of written all these like characters. We just needed these kids and it was like really more than we even knew what to do with. Like we it was only later on that we kind of unpacked like like what who are these like kids? Like we have too many of them, like mm-hmm. help. Um, 
but like we had this like Indian kid in the and we were just seeing people and then like at kind of at a certain point like because um, the rest of the stuff in the auditions would, would play really well and we never even heard the thing out loud so it was kind of this dry run for a lot of the script stuff it was like um, and then all this stuff with this like little Indian kid was just like not playing well and then finally and then um, Chris Colfer who plays Kurt now walked in the character of Kurt like did not exist and he like walked in and like sang Mr. Cellophane which was later like got put in the pilot along with all of their auditions which totally like saved the whole pilot like it was like this random like thing and he um then he left and like we kind of all looked at each other and we're like well shit because like we have to put him somewhere and like how could we have missed that guy um and then ryan smartly was like let's cut that south asian character like it's not that funny it's probably a little racist like let's not be lazy about it and then we're like and we'll um we have a very diverse cast we'll find you know a, a, a character for like for an Indian kid at some point where, like, right now, like, it just is, like, this will play better, and, like, his name's Kurt Hummel, like, he's on the... Like a club. Yeah, so, so it was stuff like that, but but it was mostly mostly pretty smooth. It took a long time, and, like, to, again, to, like, Fox's credit, both the studio and the network, like, didn't... Um, there were times when I think we felt pressured by time and just by, like, money constraints that we were, like, God, we have to, like, get going, or else this is going to be, like a really expensive prospect and might not get off the ground and like they really put the brakes on and they're like, No, I don't think like you've found these people yet. Like, was Leah one of your first choices for that role? Yeah, she was the only she was kind of the only choice for that role. Really? Uh, yeah and she again such a natural fit. So well I think the character was pretty much written for her and like Ryan, Did Ryan know her beforehand? Yeah, he had known her because he uh Jonathan Groff who was also in Spring Awakening with her, um, and they're like besties. Um, he like he Jonathan was in Ryan's Previous pilot um, called Pretty Handsome, like he and Brad wrote together, and then um, and did not go to series. Um, anyway, so he kind of had this idea. I think I actually think that like that's what she was clearly the first thing in his mind. That she he was like um, when he I think read my script, he was kind of like it seems like that was the that's what crystallized, and then he. Um, but he kind of it was interesting. He's kind of crazy like a fox. He didn't. Um, he was the only. She was the only person we tested for the role, which is really weird, and, like, um, but she just, like, came in and, like, put it, like, in her pocket and just, like, walked out with the role. Oh, really? It was really amazing. Yeah, she, she was, was confident. That. She was confident. She knew it after that. Yeah, and we probably didn't hurt that we, like, tailored an entire role to her. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, like, like, just going up there. She but she... Did you get when she was negotiating her contract? <laughs> right, right. But she's just, like, a... She was just, like, this magnificent, like... She just is that.